No! Look at the hair. It's just out of control. I look, I look fantastic. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Happy Friday. Today, we're going to learn about the sorcerer. I need to learn about the sorcerer because I'm so bad. So bad at the sorcerer. There are some classes that I have a basic handle of. And by basic, I mean I'm really bad at playing them, but at least I understand some of them. And then there's classes like the Sorcerer, which we've had Yosha on to teach us about PvE in the past. That was back at level 60, though. So the lot's changed. And I learned a lot from Yosha, but I'm ready to learn a lot. A lot from Mr. Giraffe. And no, he's not an actual giraffe. I confirmed. Did I spell sorcerer wrong? <laughs> I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Yes, yes. As you can see, guest glyphs. It's up there. We'll talk about it. Don't worry. We'll talk about the glyphs. We'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff in here. But there's some other commands that we're doing. Um, and one of them is uh, guest twitch. So exclamation point guest twitch. That will tell you our wonderful guests, Twitch, which I would hope that you would understand. Um, but yes, those are defensive glyphs. Are we going to do gunner? Yeah, we'll do gunner. We'll do we'll do everything. So I, I get a lot of questions about this. When are we going to do warrior or lancer or archers and all that kind of stuff? Um, we're going to continue to doing these teach me how to streams where uh, we'll bring in an expert from the community that applied for it. Uh, we're only bringing in people who applied. So if you're like, why didn't you use some guy that I know who's really, really good? It's because he didn't apply. Um, I'm trying to use everybody who applies and we're gonna do like round tables and stuff like that, not the, not the pizza chain. But we'll do <laughs> like group streams. Where we'll bring in multiple people that represent the same class and have a discussion about what's good. Yeah, look at that. It works. Yes, Pain Wheel did the Zerker stream. And I will release a full schedule, uh, hopefully next week. We'll have another stream next Friday. And then we're actually going to start implementing Wednesday streams as well. So we're going to start streaming at Wednesday. It's going to be at 5 o'clock Pacific time. So two hours later than now. Two hours later than now. Uh, so let me make sure that I got everything set up before we bring wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, hold on. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so we'll bring, we'll bring giraffe in in just a second. I'm making sure that all my commands are set up. We'll talk about Skyrim Slam a little bit later too. Um, we're going to announce, so I'll just, I'll just bust out some of that info right now, but I'll, I'll say it later. Uh, Skyring Slam is the last weekend of this month, of the month of April. It's going to be the 25th and the 26th. That's Saturday the 25th, Sunday the 26th of April. We're going to start taking team applications next week, next Friday. So a week from today, applications will be up. And we'll release news posts and uh, some other stuff to uh, coincide with all this information coming out. So this isn't gonna be the only place that you can learn that information. So I'll get to it, so don't worry. I will get to it. Uh, let's see, let me make sure everything's good and I'll message Draft to make sure he's ready to come on. Let's see here. And then I'll answer a couple of questions about it. I'm not going to do a straw poll. Oh, 3v3, Skyring Slam, originally planned for 5v5. I talked to some people about it um, externally, some people from the community. The idea is a 5v5 Skyring Slam would be super fun, but 3v3 Skyring Slam is more important. So 3v3 Skyring Slam, that's what's going to happen. At the end of the month, it will be 3v3. Stream just started, just started. All right, almost done here. All right, so let's let's share some of these glyphs. Let's or not let's, not the glyphs. Let's share some of the commands we've got in chat. All right. 
I added some more in there. This is this is gonna be a mess. Exclamation point commands. This is I can only I can do this. So guest glyphs shows the link uh, shows links to the glyphs. Guest rotation. We're actually gonna be talking about a rotation today. Um, so I need to make sure that my rotation is uh, is set up so that I can show all the skills in order of uh, how we should be casting them. Because again, I'm really bad at sorcerer. So if you guys are bad at sorcerer too, learn with me today. Because I need I need to know. I am so bad. I mean, I'm bad at most classes. I mean, you guys know that. And then uh, guest Twitch, and we already talked about that. And then Guildfinder. Boom, Guildfinder. But. Let me send a message to Giraffe here. You almost ready? Are you ready? <laughs> How is that even a one shot? That's all the skills. That's, that's the order for it. The way you want to do it. Magma's in there, right? Like a few times. <laughs> all right. Let's bring on. Let's bring on uh, Mr. Giraffe, and we'll give a brief introduction. And I'll switch to in game too. Here we go. All right. Hello. Hello. What's up, and Tom? And we are live. So I've only talked about a couple of things so far. Uh, I shared the kind of the glyphs that we have uh, that you've shared with me and the uh, one shot uh, combo that you've got yeah. in there too. But. Uh, we haven't really talked about who you are or anything like that, so let's get an introduction and everybody can learn to love giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> love the animal giraffe, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Confirmed and not the animal. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not All right. Animal. All right, so uh, so my name is uh, in-game um, giraffe with an extra E. Um, and, well, I guess I can explain a little bit of reason is that because actually my uh, university friends who brought me into Terra – they always called me giraffe because in real life I am a 6'4 uh, person, like I, that's my height, and I've always towered over people, so they call me a giraffe. And I'm Asian, so they, they're just like, oh, you're yellow and you're tall, giraffe. <laughs> and, <laughs> but uh, other than that, I tried to get the name giraffe on MT, which is my current server, but it's taken, so I just add, added an extra E, so it was giraffe E. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's my name right now. Uh, <laughs> I have, so I should just, uh, should I explain a little bit more, like, my, what, uh, what else? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, can lead, I can lead us on from question right, to question. Sure. <laughs> sure. So, uh, I like that, though. It's a tad, tad bit on the racist side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all, it's all about your audience, right? So yeah. it seems It's like all, it's all fun and games, don't worry. Yeah, it's exactly. All. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think to people who are familiar with the game, uh, you can see already up on the screen, it shows his uh, character profile screen. It says Officer of Good Fight, so we know mm -hmm. Giraffe is part of Good Fight. Good Fight's part of Mount Tyrannus. So let's, uh, let's talk about the guild itself. I want to talk about Good Fight and how long have you been in Good Fight. Uh, but okay. first I want to start with how long have you been playing Terra? Okay, I've been playing um, um, for a long time, but uh, I, I, I can guess, uh, I can't really say the amount of months or years, I, but I can probably guess around two plus years, a little bit before Terra went free to play. Um, that's when I first started, and I've always been a Sork. Yeah. Always? Yeah, always been a Sork, never really made any other classes. Awesome. Let's see here. So it says you're an officer of Good Fight. Mm. So how long have you been in Good Fight? Um, it's been a little bit over a year. I actually applied uh, and got into Good Fight last year in January, February. So it just, just recently just passed over my one year anniversary with Good Fight. And um, I have went through the recruitment process too of going from a regular member and now I'm an officer. Wow, so you just kind of, you just worked your way up. The yeah, <laughs> Not, yeah, basically working my way up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So I've seen you in a couple PvP tournaments in the past, but let's talk about your experience as a PvP player before we get into all the, uh, the sexy details like, uh, like crystals and rolls and stuff. <laughs> uh, so what have you done in PvP uh, that kind of makes you above everybody else in terms of experience? 
Um, well, for once, um, ever since uh, VM1 days, or even conjunct days, I've been running, ever, well, ever since Freewind came out, I've been always playing Freewind. And it's like a, almost an obsession with me. Like, I love Freywind. It's because it's like a large BG. Uh, there's multi it's not just one person, not like a, as small as three. So it's a group of people. You can play with a lot of friends. So you don't have to be just a couple. You don't only play with a couple of people. You can play with a lot of people. And um, ever since then, I've been in various PvP tournaments. Um, the first, I've been in some small MT tournaments uh, when I was uh, in Shatter with some like Corsairs tournaments, some 10v10 deathmatch tournaments, and we won that. Um, the big EME tournaments um, that I've been in have been Can Clash 2 and 3 and Skyring Slam. Uh, I was in Super Shishimi Pals in Can Clash 2, the second one. Um, unfortunately, we did not win. At the time, I was like kind of like a solo player, so I just, we, a bunch of us, a bunch of friends, uh, we just teamed up in Can Clash 2 and played together. We, we got pretty far. I think it was top four, actually. We got top four. And, uh, and then after that, I actually joined Good Fight after. And uh, we, the next tournament was Skyring Slam last year. And I was on team bro, 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 bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was me and a bunch of our friends, which was uh, me, Dave, DT, uh, Sashimi, and Archer, and Bloodlight. And we just played. We, realistically, we were just trying to play for fun. And we actually became second. And we got a lot of um, fame for it because it was just a team without a Lancer. <laughs> yeah. That, and I got to say that that tournament was really fun for us too because you know, it was just all hype and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, remember, I remember talking to people and, and talking about the teams. And uh, one of the things that people were talking about was every team's going to have a Lancer. It's just going to be like Lancer, Priest, and then something else. It's going to be so boring. But then there were just like Team Bro, 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 Bro. <laughs> was so much fun to watch. Um, and then even, even with, like, uh, Team Doge, who you guys beat in the last round, they had a, they had a Lancer on their team, but the big, the big star of that was, uh, like, Decode and Warmth. Yeah. So that yeah. was a lot of fun to watch, too. So I, I, was, I was really glad to see that final. That was like, really exciting. And you guys can find the finals out there if you just search Skyring Slam Finals. I think Flo's got one on his page, and uh, you can probably find ours as well on YouTube, that is, um, mm -hmm. a recap of it. And it's really fun because everyone in that tournament, uh, we usually play threes together or play other stuff together. So it was like fighting your friends, but it was really intense and that was a really great tournament. I can't wait for the next one in the end of April. Yep. And that <laughs> leads to what I was talking about a little bit earlier. There's probably been more people coming in, but I'll cover it since PvP is the topic today. Uh, the next Skyring Slam, it's been between 5v5 and 3v3. It's been kind of a toss up, but it is going to be a 3v3 tournament. Um, we may do a 5v5 tournament in the future. But uh, 3v3 is the plan for the next Skyring mm -hmm. Slam. Sounds great. Um, and probably the next PvP tournament uh, was uh, Can Clash 3 that just happened. And uh, I was playing for Good Fight Yellow. Uh, we had two teams. I was on Good Fight Yellow. Um, and I was the, one of the shot callers for it. And we won the tournament. And it was really fun. And, and here I am today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get into uh, let's get into talking about the Sork. Obviously, you got lots of lots of history. Um, pretty much being involved in almost every tournament that we've run. It sounds like. Um, <laughs> I think there's one that you weren't in, and that was that might have been before your time. I think. Um, so, let's get into. Uh, I want to make sure that I covered everything here. Um, I did. So, let's talk about just the Sork in general. Let's give like a brief overview. Uh, one thing I like to do is, is ask if you could explain to a like, new player, the Sorcerer, in like one paragraph, how would you explain it? That's very hard because Sork is really diverse. I would definitely say it's a, the glass cannon, quote unquote, of Terra, where you get hit for a lot, but at the same time you deal a, very, a lot of damage too. Uh, it's a very hard class to ma master. Um, but it's very fruitful when you do. And that was a few sentences I would definitely put in. Okay, that's fair enough. And then what would you say is um, the strength of the Sorcerer? Like, what's the big... Is it, is it just the pure damage output, or, or what would you say? I would definitely say that the advantage of being a Sork is most people think we're just damage dealers. Like, we just output a lot of damages, but that's not only it. Um, why the reason why Sork is so good in open world PP and everything else is just because we d provide a lot of uh, utility too, and that utility and some people don't uh, underestimate, such as silences, mana tapping, 
um, stun traps, pain traps, stuff like that. And I think um, Sorks are very diverse, as in they can deal all damage, but at the same time they can provide a lot of uh, strategic uh, openings and just skills in general that people don't really s seem to value as more than our quote-unquote damage. Okay. That's probably a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about, uh, we'll, we'll try and go through this fairly quickly because I, I, after talking to you a little bit earlier, there's a lot to talk about with the sort, uh, with nuances and then some questions and stuff like that. So we'll kind of uh, try and quickly go through the, the gear uh, portion. So I'm just gonna hover my mouse to get the tool tips of the uh, crystals so people can see what kind of crystals Giraffe is using. Um, if there's any input you wanted to give as well, feel free to uh, mention that out now. Okay. So I just, I just go from Zerks and then from there and whatever? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think we need to cover the Zerks in general. Um, okay. it, just if there's anything that you feel is out of the ordinary to what people okay. would expect. Sure. Like if there's maybe a, a situation where people should swap out one type of crystal for another in PvP, uh, this would be probably a good time for that. Sure. So I think the, only, the few big things is right now in this level 65 patch with VM4, I actually think it's... Um, more beneficial to have two pristine griefing zerks and two carving zerks. Um, just because the carving zerks give you crit rate, um, six crit rate, and as a sork, you really de depend on the crit rate as well as PvP damage. So I like to have a balance, and that's why I have two griefing, two crit rate. But you can have four crit rate or two, two or four griefing. It's up to you. I, this is my preference, and I and I feel the I output more damage by having this setup. Uh, that's one of the things that might, some people still might not do. Um, another thing is um, when I run with, um, I'm, I'm kind of, we, I, when I do threes, I like to run with zerks, um, zerkers. So in, instead of uh, the usual setup for uh, the setups is for red crystals is like you have a salivating, you have a forceful, you have a savage, and you have a carving. Uh, but I like to actually focus, uh, take out my carving uh, niviet. Uh, for, a, for a fine virulent uh, niviet, which, which basically gives you a, every time you crit, you get a poison effect on your knockdown enemies. And the reason, um, not many people know this, but sorks, sorks actually knock down people a lot. And when you're paired up with a, with a Slayer or a Zerker, which is a knockdown city, um, you, every time you crit them, you actually apply poison damage, which is approximately, I think, 1.5k damage. Wow. And one of the secrets that not many people know is that uh, me and David, uh, DT, we would knock down people, and I would put a hailstorm down. They would have no retail, and every time a hailstorm crits, it'll give poison damage. So every, I will say, every second there will be a poison tick, and every, uh, the person will be taking more poison damage, which is one of the secrets, quote unquote, to for playing certain classes or certain comps. And okay. Those are basically it. Yeah, and I know we talked about uh, if people who watched the stream last week. We had Pain Wheel on, who was talking about berserkers as well, and he mentioned some of the, the major benefits of the knockdown, so I could see how pairing that, especially when, since you like playing with Berserkers, uh, could be a really big benefit. Yes, definitely. All right, so uh, I would like to kind of just briefly go through the roles on gears as, on the gear as well. Um, sure. So I want to start with uh, the accessories. I see crit rate and uh, crit power being, so, or uh, rather crit damage being some of the focus. But I see on the uh, Firebeat ring, I also see a replenish 0.4% uh, of total MP every mm -hmm. five seconds. Uh, does mana become an issue at any point for sorcerers then? Yes, mana, mana manipulation and your t management actually is a very important thing as sorcerers because we have a very limited pool of mana. I would say very, like very, very small pool of mana. And our skills take a lot of mana to itself to cast. And some people will say, well, you could have crit damage instead of the mana. And because you, you'll feel no difference, but ever since VM2, I've been rolling with crit rate and mana on my ring, and I've been feeling some differences. That extra 0 0.4 mana, you might say like, oh, it doesn't really make that much difference, but I can actually feel it during my gameplay that it does feel like I have a bit more mana to work with, an extra magma bomb to stagger. It's always those little differences that um, can make a big differential between two people or two comps. And with mana, uh, management being so heavily on Sorks, I actually feel that I have enough crit damage, so I don't need the extra crit damage on my ring roll, um, that I can actually afford the mana. And people can go, you can have the crit rate instead of the mana, but this is my kind of preference. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. Okay. So I'm just kind of making making sure to hover over each of these yeah each of these pieces. Man, the deathwise stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I like got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I like the rolls. Yeah, I got really lucky. <laughs> you know, three other people for that. <laughs> uh, but everything else on my gear should be um, up to par. Uh, except for maybe my earring because I can't get a perfect one. But other than that, it's all, um, it's all uh, typical things. You're talking about the, de the, the death wise earring? Wise cascade, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I couldn't get, like, I could, I could only get, I got the stun duration, but I couldn't get the uh, raise max HP. So I guess, all right, that's probably <laughs> one of the best ones I can get. I can, I, for some reason, my RNG is really bad with the earrings. <laughs> so I can't get a better one. All right, and then just looking at some of the other stuff here. Um, I always like focusing on the chest piece as well because the chest piece has a role that nothing else really rolls for, and that's a, it actually applies a benefit to a one skill. So mm -hmm. Fire Blast is the one that's picked here. Is that fairly typical for sorcerers? Um, yes, because it's um, the bread and butter of sorcerers because it's a big, the big AoE damage that everyone talks about. Um, I have played around with uh, Void Pulse, Fire Blast, and hailstorm, especially when I was in the tournament server, because uh, we can get like we can just test out everything, right? Right, yeah. And I tested out everything. Um, I actually prefer uh, void pulse in threes because it's the because there's very few times where you can actually get fire blast out because it takes a lot of casting time to actually cast a skill. And most people, once they see a fire blast coming circle around you, they most likely will stun or stagger you out of it. Um, so I actually like. Um, during the Skyrim Slam tournament, I actually ran Void Pulse because you can just dish it out immediately um, faster than Fire Blast. Uh, but because this is the normal server and I do PvE and PvP, um, so I, I prefer Fire Blast because I, I use Fire Blast way more than I would do than Void Pulse. Okay. So, yeah. so the Fire Blast is probably, in your opinion, just a better pick overall, but you'd overall. pick Void Pulse if the only thing you were doing was. Yeah, if like. There's nothing else. If it was a three tournament, the threes tournament, I'll, it'll be either like Hailstorm or Void Pulse. It really depends what I'm feeling for or the comp. But for all well, well roundedness, I'll just choose Fire Blast for more okay. damage. That's fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just hovering the mouse over the rest of the stuff here. We don't. I don't think we need to talk about it too much. Just to give people an indication of um, what uh, what what stats are rolled for, basically. Um. So for you want to know like what like uh, the gloves and shit, stuff like that? Oh no, it's okay. I I, I just wanted to show them. If there's <laughs> okay. questions, I'll I'll make sure to ask. I just like uh, anybody who's watching. I think a lot of people understand why things mm -hmm. are picked a particular way, but they don't necessarily know which is the best one. That, that's at least the way I understand it as well. Yeah. I, if I see someone like uh, I don't know someone like yourself picking these kind of stats, I'll say, oh, I understand why they picked that. I just didn't know if that was the best one to pick. Yeah, yeah. It all comes down with this patch. It all comes down preference, too, because it's very, um, this patch is very flexible. And the meta game right now is you can really choose whatever you want that you feel that would be most beneficial. S sometimes it's up to your scenario and what can be better than over other things. So Hailstorm can be very good for um, PvE right now or something like that, or, and you might or you do, you do just exclusively threes and you just have void poles. And it really depends on how you want to play the game, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I like. I like being able to change some of that stuff around. Yep. Okay, so I think that's fairly straightforward. If people have questions in the chat, if you're watching and you have questions, feel free to ask uh, probably maybe a little bit later. Um, if you want to ask the question now, we may not be able to answer it because we kind of try and get through stuff and then open it up to as many questions as you want uh, later on in the stream. So let's talk about the mentality of players. So this is going to be uh, the way that a new sorcerer or even current sorcerers should be thinking, acting, and then moving their character around. Uh, let's, let's touch on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if I were to say the most, what the most important thing right now as a sorc, or playing a sorc indefinitely, is the most important thing isn't about learning your rotation, your everything. It's about positioning yourself and how you position yourself in like the large scheme of things in the dungeon, in the in the battleground, anything, whether it's open world PvP threes or Freywind. wind, because as a sorcerer, you actually want the right position yourself, or because you don't want to get caught out, you don't want to be out of range of your healer to heal you, because you are very squishy. So you always want to be your near around your healer, but at the same time, be able to get the back damage um, as a sorcerer on on your enemy players. And if you get and sorcerers have a lot of um, 
just recently got Nova and Warp Barrier, which helped us a bit, a bit more on our ability to kite ourselves and defend ourselves. So uh, we've actually have more utility now. And I would definitely s still say, though, if you want to be a, a difference between a good sorcerer and a, and a great sorcerer is all about your positioning. And even now, I have sometimes I have various flaws um, positioning myself, too, because I sometimes overextend, overextend myself in battles and I don't recognize it that my team is still way behind me and I just die because I'm not exactly um, focused on my team. I just want to go go hard right into the battlefield. And it and that's and that's sometimes it's I do it wrong too. So it's a really it's a touchy subject where if um, you can't you can always prepare for it, but there's until the actual scenario happens, you can't really know what, what to do. And you just gotta do your best guess, I would say. Okay, so it's it's probably a lot of um, either muscle memory or just getting used to the class yeah. over time. Definitely, I've I, I can definitely say that um, I play priests sometimes in solo queue and sorks. Uh, priests generally is very fun, I find a very fun class, and I'm not the best at it. No way, I'm the best, but uh, it's very weird to f play like melee, melee classes for me because I play sork all the time, and playing <laughs> melee is just like. I'm too close to players. I usually, as a sword, I want to be as far as away as possible to be able to cast. <laughs> and when I play like a lancer or a warrior, I'm like, I feel very weird right now. I'm out of my comfort zone. Yeah, you just right in there. I want to get out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, let's break it down into some of the uh, individual places and just kind of give a, I don't know, a, a generic overview for um, like newer players or, or players that uh, may not know how to play the sorcerer. Mm -hmm. um, so. We we kind of talked about three v threes, and that's probably going to be a lot of the focus of the discussion. But in a, in a, something like uh, corsairs, for example, okay, um, what kind of uh, mentality should players be going at it? Is it kind of a go in, deal as much damage as possible, or should they always kind of keep their head on a swivel kind of thing? Um, well, in for example, in corsairs, uh, what I actually do a lot is uh, I I man the ladders. <laughs> oh, okay, because <laughs> the AOE damage is too is a lot, and also when I'm defending. I usually go behind everyone breaking the gate, and then usually I put a hailstorm down and I just crit fire blast or something, and then, like five people drop <laughs> immediately. <laughs> and that's like the best feeling as a sork when you do your AOE damage and it's just people just evaporate, and that's the best feeling ever, I think. <laughs> um, okay. In Freywind, um, it, and threes are different, way different, um, because in Freywind, I would definitely say that uh, you have to position yourself. For example, I'm talking about the mid pyre, let's say on mid pyre, and it was the first initial fight. You want to get around um, the opposing team where you can get back damage, but not get pulled too far where you're getting soloed by like a slayer, a warrior, or a lancer. But you'd be enough range to be in the giga zone for your lancer to giga, and you can just uh, just AOE down the giga. So it's, it's it's a touchy subject because you're so squishy, and you can die from like realistically three three different moves from a slayer or something. So it's always step. What kind of boundaries can you set, and how well you can prep yourself for those initial attacks? And in threes, it's totally different. It's everyone's going to pick on you in threes. The <laughs> sorcerer has one of the low defenses or endurance, so everyone hits you for like a truck. Um, so in threes, what I primarily try to do is, if they're not focusing me, then I always pick on the healer, try to stagger and sleep them. Um, if they're focusing me, all I try to do is wait for my secondary DPS and see if they're ready for a full combo so we can go ahead. And then when they're ready, I would um, silence, sleep, stun, whatever on their healer and then blow all, all our moves on that one person that we're focusing on because that's what we're re really good at too. And it's just different mentalities for each, each battleground. And I would say it, from switching to threes to Freywind or to, to Corsairs is very different from just because it's always diff a different thing. And it's very hard to cope too. You, you, <laughs> it's all about muscle memory. I would definitely say muscle memory and playing from a lot of times just to see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, and I think that's fair to say about a lot of classes. Now, I'll, again, I'll, I'll continue going back to last week since that was the most recent one. We talked about block canceling and getting used to when you should block to cancel. Mm -hmm. uh, as with any class, really, in Terra, you're going to get better the more you play it. Um, yes. So it sounds like with uh, it's just as a generic overview playing and, and this goes to every class i'm just going to say this now since you mentioned it as well if you're in corsairs 
you should watch the ladders. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes to watch the inners, but I love to because no, I don't trust anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a Sork, there you go. Inner ladders, you're good at it. You're real good at it. You should check them. <laughs> <laughs> That's our job. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So we covered all the, the different PvP maps. Uh, how about some... I know Good Fight. You guys have participated in some uh, some world PvP. You're in the Cutthroat League. So out in the wild, if you get into in a nice battle or even a guild battle, it's something large, uh, do you kind of go at it similar to Corsairs or is it more like 3v3 to you? Are you getting picked on a lot in world PvP type stuff? Um, definitely. Actually, um, for some reason, I think when they see an Afro Popo, they go for me first. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like a giga target. Like, they will <laughs> go after me. But... Uh, it's because I'm I'm most likely a ranged DPS, and open world GVGs is very different from er everything, um, because you have consumables. Everything is up to factor. There's even might be people healing outside of guild, so you got to factor that in. It's a lot of variables that you have to take in, and the best thing I would definitely say is you have to have a dedicated shot caller for I would say at least like two shot callers for the GVG, and as a Sork you're not supposed to be lacking behind. You've got to push in with your melee DPS. And that's what most people um, don't really do in open world GBGs is that they, they like, oh, if we're kind of losing, we've got to kite back. No, that's if like, by kiting back, you're giving back damage, right? And back damage means more damage. As a Sork, I love, people, love seeing people flee away because that means easy damage for me and they're not, picking, they're, not, they're not focusing me. And as a Sork... Some people stay in the middle of the pack because they want to dish out all the AoEs. What I like to do is go around uh, on the side so that it gives the enemy team or the enemy, enemy guild um, two, two priorities. Either you go for that lone Sork or that couple of people on the side or I have to focus on the main brunt of the, of the enemy force in the middle of us. So if, the more variables you give to the enemy players, that means the more, um, the more ideas and the more scenarios that the shot caller on the other guild has to come up with, right? And they have to deal with us. And most of the times, battles happen within a couple of seconds that they don't have enough time to read. And that's when I just, I, when Sorks shine and they can just teleport John in paint, uh, with a burst of celerity, like uh, put a hailstorm down, stun trap, Nova, so you can clear a circle around yourself and then just fire blast the area where you think the most people are. And I probably, you, you most likely will get like two or three kills at least there. <laughs> But so would you say that uh, would you say that sorcerers then, in that situation, if you had the the option between uh, larger groups or kind of picking off a couple people on the side, what what would a sorcerer excel at? Is it doing damage to that larger group or is it just bursting people? I would definitely say both. We are very oh. good at um, picking off people because we have time guard which holds the person, roots the person in, in place, so we can pick off two people at a time on the side and easily burst them down. Or we can go in the middle of the pack and just burst people down like that. It's very easy for us, and we can do it at a uh, range uh, scenario. We don't, we're not in front of you. We can be uh, like 15 meters behind you and still pick you off like that. Um, I personally love going on the side and picking people off um, because I know my guild's good enough to push them in um, without, without my help. That, um, cause, and then I'll just do my job in picking people off on the side. And eventually it adds up because um, one or two people th there, you're like, oh, it's only one or two people, it's 60 people. But a, one person can contribute a lot to GVGs and how you position yourself really affects how the GVG will, will occur. And it's, I don't want to get too much out, out because I, my guild does have strats of our own, but that's the main basis of it. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, cool. Well, I think, <laughs> I think for me, I, if, if I had that, that option, I'd have to go to the big group. <laughs> oh really? If, if you're yeah, good at like both, Wilson, right? <laughs> yeah, you want to see the numbers, right? If if, if yeah. they're pretty equal at both, I I wanted that big numbers. I'd probably just go in and die though. Yeah, uh, like because I did that before, for, but for some reason I'm always the when I'm, when I'm in the big group, I'm always the first one to die, and I always feel bad. I'm like I'm not doing my most potential. <laughs> so, that's why I start to stray around the sides and uh, start to pick people off because then I'll survive faster and then when, when numbers get thinned out and then I go in with the main, main group and just wipe everyone out. Uh. <laughs> but I do, I do feel you. Um, it's just that I, for some reason I feel always squishy. <laughs> and uh, always yeah. the first one to die. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could definitely see that. I think you probably have to be, uh, be pretty quick on, your, uh, quick on your toes to avoid uh, uh, all that damage. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
So I saw one of the questions in chat, and it was something that we talked about a little bit earlier as well um, off of the stream, and that was uh, mm. class. What, uh, or not class, race, rather. What mm. race would you say is the best, or is there a best race for sorcerers? Um, at this point, back then, everyone chose Ellen because everyone thought it was, oh, it's the fastest animation time, whatever, and then you can, and then you can uh, do, I'll put your skills faster. Um, fun fact, I was actually a high elf female first when I was leveling to 60 and for a decent amount of time because uh, of the, the racial skill, the uh, replenish mana skill, I was like, oh, this is a great skill, I need to have this. And then, um, and then when everyone was saying like, oh, Ellen Sork is the best because you have the fastest output time, and at the time I just went with the flow, and I was actually an Ellen Sork for a while too. Uh, and to be honest, I tested out in the servers. It's I tested out every every race in the servers, and I would have to say if I have to if I had to play, it would either be a either a Kassanic female or a Popo. Oh. And the reason behind it is because uh, Ellen Sork is very good, um, easy to read, e but it's too easy to read. For example, if you were a Lancer or something, you can tell what your casting animation is, and it's when people can tell what you're casting, then people can stagger or stun you. But when I'm a, um, I play Popo right now is not only because um, I'm cute. I'm so <laughs> cute, right? <laughs> no. um, but it's because when I cast my skills, they don't really see what I'm casting. And most people, most people don't see it, and they kind of like, they kind of like double think it, and they're like, oh, that's, he's not casting a fire blast. He's just in the air casting a uh, mana volley or something. Um, when they don't see the circle or something, hmm. and they don't stop me. And I've actually seen some people double think of uh, what I'm doing, and they don't stagger me. They go for somewhere else. And also, one of the good things is that when I'm doing a stun trap or painful trap, it's very hard for them to see what I'm casting, and they don't. Some lancers don't notice it. They keep attacking me, and then they all of a sudden they get stunned randomly. They're like, "What? What the heck was that?" And they didn't know that I was actually casting a stun trap. And which is one of the reasons why I make, I'm playing on Popo right now is because they can't see what I'm casting, but with other classes, they can. It's very distinctive of what you're casting, and they can tell. They can just go, like, "Oh, this guy's casting fire blast. Time to time to stagger that right now." And there goes your biggest move ever, right? So it comes down to a lot of tells, then. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's all about reading your reading the sork. <laughs> oh wow, interesting. And I, and I don't and I don't want people to read me as easily, so that's why I'm playing a popo, and I'm actually minus three height, so <laughs> it's harder for me for them to see me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but another reason why, um, the other class that I wouldn't mind playing is Kassanic females. Um, the reason why is that Kassanic males, to me, seem very clunky. I know it's, it's all the same, but to me, it feels kind of clunky. Um, Kassanic females is very easy to read too, because their skills, you can tell what they're casting very easily, but because they have an extra crit chance. So for Frey Wind or Open World PvP, if I was just doing that all day, I will probably roll, roll to that one just for the uh, extra 1% <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I would definitely just roll as a Popo, because... Because um, he looks yeah, so good. Popo's kind of read me. Yeah, Popo's so good. Why looks would so you? Good. Exactly. <laughs> I like that, and that's that makes me happy too. Because uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of people about um, about their their race class combination. Usually, it comes to Ellen. Uh, sometimes high elf, like in the in the form of a lancer. We talked about that. Yeah. High elves are good for that as well, or not high? Yeah, high elves, males. Yeah, um, high elves. But Popo for Sork is good. <laughs> Sork it's Popo good. is everywhere. Let's do yeah. this. Oh, and for those who are wondering. Why I'm wearing a suit with the kitty backpack? I've been getting a lot of questions. It's because <laughs> it's my guild color. It's black and yellow. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! Yeah. Sticking with the color and everything. Exactly. <laughs> you gotta match everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but definitely uh, the reason, uh, the main reasons I had to play Popo is because um, not because it's a faster animation, not for anything. It's because it, it, people can't read my skills as much, and it gives me a slight advantage when I'm PVPing. Awesome. So we're talking about skills, uh, reading, rot reading the rotation and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about, uh, you shared with me one rotation. You called it the one-shot rotation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to put it in chat here. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. Rotation. I think that's it. Did I spell it right? Yeah, there we go. All right, so we've got the, the rotation that you shared with us. Let's talk about doing that and uh, 
and I, I kind of want to see a demonstration of uh, it being completed and the damage that you can put. So I'm actually going to click on your friend here. Sure. Um, I, I'm dueling here, so uh, just tell me when to start. Okay. I'm just I'm looking at the gear too, so they can see that she's not just like way under geared. No, she uh, he's uh, very Rocky. geared, very very geared. Yeah. I just call him whatever the character. Is. <laughs> yeah, I have that. I have that uh, tendency to do that too. Every time I see an Ellen, I'm like, "Oh, she's really good." I'm like, "Oh." Yeah, get her. <laughs> get 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 that Ellen. Go get her. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Feel free. Feel free to do the demonstration. Wow. My my GM character is bugging out. Oh, you too? I thought it was just me. <laughs> I put him over against the wall so I could have him up here, but I I move like right here and he's in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I see that too. That's why I thought it was just my computer. Uh, uh. But nope. I guess not. <laughs> no, nope, it's it's everything. <laughs> stupid, stupid character. All right, feel free to go ahead. Okay. I'll turn this up so people can hear it as well. And that's my rotation. Uh, I didn't do the flame project at the end because I killed her too fast. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, so there's some variations, but I can explain that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the uh, the strengths of it. It went. I think it went by so quickly. Just seeing it all in in uh, in action here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's going on during this rotation. Maybe break it down into a bit slower. So uh, I shared the rotation in chat, uh, starting with time geyer to burst, and then ice needle. So we saw. I think the first thing we saw probably was the ice needle coming yes. in. Yes. That was so, bad, but go ahead. Yeah. So people have learned that the moment you see a Sork throwing an ice needle, it means that there's a sleep coming onto you in five seconds. <laughs> um, because that's the uh, glyph um, where you increase speed duration, uh, increase speed for casting a Mind Blast, which is a sleep. And the moment someone sees the ice needle, there's like, oh, a sleep's coming out, you gotta dodge or blow GS immediately. It's a good, so I use the ice needle to not really do DPS, but to fake people up blowing their skills that they don't have to, like backsteps or GS ahead of time. So I might not have sleep on, but I just, I just throw it in the air and people just blow everything. <laughs> it's like a fake. It's a fake of fake. <laughs> um, but the reason why uh, I do, I can, it's a variation. So for example, if the person is running away from you and you think they have a time jaunt or they have a backstep, the first thing I would definitely do is just a time guard. This roots the person, but they can still move. So mystics, they can't, uh, they can't move. So if they try to get out, they're either stun ball me or fear me, sleep me, whatever. But other classes, they can, for example, if a sork, and our sork uh, time guard me, the only skill I can uh, use is my glacial retreat, and that will get me out of center, or I'll just war bury it, or I'll um, stone skin. But the re main reason for time guard to start off, I would most most of the times is to put that person in place so they're they're in um, they're in combat so they can't move as much. And then the next few is just the reason why I do ice needle, uh, magma bomb. Uh, I'm sorry, ice needle, burst of celerity, magma bomb, and then sleep is because you throw the ice needle for the uh, extra casting speed. I burst of celerity because just the speed, and then Magma Bomb to stun, and then you would sleep them. When they're staggered, your sleep, my, my Ice Needle was, proc was actually off, but you would sleep them uh, off the stagger of the Magma Bomb, actually. Um, sometimes when you have a really good ping, you can get out of it, but most people who uh, don't have a good ping, they re can't really get out of it. And that's one of the drawbacks of it. So you kind of have to fake, you kind of have to fake your Magma Bomb sometimes, and then, um, they might back, so predict where they are and then maybe sleep on the other side just because you think they're going to that side because some, some people can actually get out of that Magma Bomb sleep combo. And that's one of the first combo within the, the large combo. <laughs> so you're saying you, uh, you actually aimed the, the, the sleep to the side. Is that to guess where they're going to like jaunt to? Yeah, so sometimes, um, sometimes if people have really good pings or they're really fast on backstep or teleport jaunt, they can actually get out of the sleep. So most of the times, when you stagger and you sleep, they can't get out of it, but they have that slight half a second to get out of it. And if I know they're, they're a person that typically can get out of it, um, I usually predict where they are and try to sleep where they're going. So the moment they get out of the back step, they're slept. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you're, you're, you are actually shooting ahead of yes. where you think they're going to be kind of thing. Exactly. Oh. And the reason why, like back in VM1 days, you have enough attack speed to do that. 
But now in VM4, you don't really have enough attack speed that you're, you can stagger sleep immediately um, so, so that uh, you, they won't get out of the stagger, stagger, magma bomb stagger, and then immediate sleep. So sometimes I have to play with it. Like, I think this guy can get out of it, so I will sleep on the side. But most of the times, I'll be able to uh, hit that combo uh, without, uh, heart, without any hesitation. OK. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we had uh, Mind Blast Stun, and then you had a Glacial Retreat Hailstorm Nerve Exhaustion yeah. on that list as well. Uh -huh. um, so why, why the Glacial Retreat at that moment? Is it because you expect them to be coming towards you? No, um, actually, uh, the reason, okay, so what the full combo uh, would, like, after doing the whole sleep, I would do a Stun Trap, and then I would Glacial, uh, Glacial is because oh. you, notice, you notice how far I jump back. Right. It's because the hailstorm is not cast in front of you. It's casted a little bit ahead, right? Right. So it gives me the distance to actually hit, hit the hailstorm. So you can, si you, kinda, you can kind of see that uh, Ish is actually around the center, like in the middle of it almost. Mm -hmm. And then the next skill when I do a silence is because so that at the time, they'll, they'll, it'll be stunned. Um, so when I do a silence is that when they, so they won't be able to retal retaliate um, but, uh, and get out of that hailstorm. And that's like, it kind of flows through everything. So that person's immobilized in the hailstorm, taking the hailstorm procs, and then a fire blast, void pulse, and then the whole shazam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it, was, it was the trap, the trap that gets you up close, and then you have exactly. to retreat back out. I got gotcha. you. And another reason why, and a lot of people I see, I play against a lot of Sorks in Fairy Wind and Threes, and the combo I always see is stun trap, void pulse, fire blast. And they think that's going to one-shot everyone, <laughs> but it's very few chances where they can one-shot. Um, although that combo is very fast and efficient, but most of the times it won't be able to one-shot. And the reason why I don't do Glacial and then Fire Blast with the back damage is because that I, Hailstorm actually does a lot of damage. People underestimate the damage of Hailstorm. In Hailstorm, you can also get VM procs, uh, Vision Maker procs for those who don't know, um, and they can also provide additional stuns. And also remember, I also have, sometimes if I run the Very Light Crystal, the crit damage on the hailstorm, if they're knocked down, will actually give me poison damage too. So hailstorm, I tested out. Hailstorm can actually do as much as a fire blast if that person's in hailstorm for the full duration and with crits, of course. Awesome. And um, it's really RNG to be honest. Um, but the narrow reason, there's another reason why I do glacial, not just backstep, is because sometimes the glacial, because I'm behind the person, would actually when I when I do glacial would actually proc my forceful uh, crystal. So it gives me, uh, my crit attacks will actually increase my power. So every time I crit on the hailstorm will give me extra, extra crits. So that's the reason also why, because you, you can see why I was in front of, I was front of Ish the, when I teleport jaunted, right? Mm -hmm. But I immediately moved back because I wanted to get the, the crit. And then, and then when I casted a hailstorm, it would automatically get those extra crit power uh, on crits. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and then the reason why I do um, the reason why I do nerve exhaustion, which is the silence, is so that the person is stunned right now. But I, on top of it, I I would silence them so they they can't they can't retell um, when, when the stun wears off. And that's why I do Nova to put them down, and I put fire blast. Although it would be a frontal fire blast. It's still doing a lot of damage, and then I'll just put, I just throw everything out, like, and after that, I'll just do, I do Fire Blast, Void Pulse, Magma, Flame Barrage, because they usually, I usually do Flame and Barrage at the end, because usually they'll try to get out of that death circle, and that's a lock on, right? And sometimes I might crit, and that might kill him. Interesting. Uh, very yeah. cool. Okay. And most, a lot of people don't understand that, um, Back damage is a very important thing. People like people know about back damage. Oh, back damage is the reason why a lot of people uh, do very well. Uh, back damage is to crit the boss even more. But it's people underestimate in PvP. Uh, but that's why when I do a glacial, see, I just got a uh, proc right there, a forceful proc. So every crit I do right now on my hailstorm would do extra damage, and I get VM procs too, which is even better. And it's all to set up basically for that one shot rotation. The pros and cons, the pros is that um, if you crit on multiple moves, for example, if you crit on some Hailstorm procs and then your Fire Blast crits and your Nova crits, most likely you will definitely one-shot that person. 
like I would give you probably 70% you will one shot that person unless that person is has uh, charms buffs everything like like everything but most of the times it will one shot that person um, the, um, the only time it will not one-shot that person, like one with that rotation, is if uh, you don't crit on anything. Like your fire blast is just white damage, void pulse, white damage, no uh, procs on um, hailstorm. Okay. But yeah, because the just because the the crystal gives you so much more power, um, you do way more damage, and that's the reason why I do glacial. It gives me it gives me extra distance to cast because sorcerers need a lot of distance to cast. But at the same time, um, it gives me opportunity to do more damage. Awesome. All right. So that's a real good. That's a really good demonstration of um, of that combination here. Being able to see. I mean, we saw during the rotation that you you killed your friend. <laughs> yeah. They were dead. Yeah. <laughs> and their gear's not bad. So that, that that shows just how much damage you can pump out with that. Um, obviously, that seems like a, if you're left to your own devices, if there's nobody on you, right? Like, you're able to yes. probably get that kind of stuff off. Definitely. Um, let's talk about uh, – I always like bringing this one up. It's kind of an interesting question. Wow, I've been online for six hours. Um, that's kind of an interesting question. Uh, let's talk about things that you see other sorcerers do that you think is either not a good idea or things that you don't see other sorcerers do that they should be doing. Okay. Um the one thing I see um, new sorcs doing is the moment they do the sleep combo, and um, they immediately YOLO fire blast <laughs> <laughs> off the sleeve. And then I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I'm so lazy I do it too. But uh, a lot of times I see people like sleep the person. I'm like, yeah, they got this person. They have all the mana in the world and they have plenty of time to do their combo. But all they do is. Um, over channel and then fire blast hoping it crits and they'll, it's gonna kill them fire blast won't one shot people anymore it's not like VM one days that fire blast will just completely one shot that person unless that person's under geared and that sometimes I'm just like why why did you do that <laughs> <laughs> you can do so much more <laughs> um, that's one of my pet peeves uh, I would definitely say um, some people do as I said before some people what they do is just uh, the stun trap and then Void Pulse into Fire Blast, and then like, oh, it's gonna, it, it realistically only does 60% with crits, uh, depending if they're, if, if, assuming everyone's in the same gear. And it ticks me off because I'm like, okay, if you don't have your cooldown for Hailstorm or anything else, okay, that's a good, it's a good way, but you can be so much more. Like if you have, you can do that, and then you can still do your knockdown combo, which is like your silence, and then your uh, Nova, which is a great new skill that Sorks got, and then Fire Blast, so it's knockdown damage, right? Because um, that's why sometimes, and I can, I some, I always change the glyph setup depending what comp I'm playing, um, what I'm doing. Um, that's why I also love the double crit rate for carving. No, uh, sometimes in threes too. It really depends on the situation. And I would definitely say uh, for a Sork, it. You have to play this situation. You can't be just like other classes where, oh, uh, Lancer, I'm going to set up for this certain glyph page and I'm not going to change it. For Sorks, you have to change it depending on the person and the comp you're facing. So the glyph pages, I actually, oh, I don't want to go ahead, Tonka, but. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I don't want to go ahead. I was going to talk about glyphs, but. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I mean, if, if, the, if you feel that the glyphs are worth talking about, then definitely uh, you feel free to talk about them. It's just a lot of times with the glyphs set up, there's not a lot to say. It's just like, that's the glyph set up, and that's pretty much what you should use. There's not really a lot of variation. <laughs> yeah. But if you have stuff that you want to talk about with the glyphs, I, I definitely want to, to hear what you've got to say. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just take a sh short shot at the glyphs right now. It's not going to be too much. Okay. And um, I'll share them in chat as well. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, the glyphs I set up that I actually used on there is like the basic setups I use, but I always change it depending on the people I face. For example, if I know these these people, the the team I'm facing will always focus me first. I would I would uh, d during threes I would change it up so that I would have a a bit a mix of both hybrid of damage skills, um, some utility skills at the same time a lot of defensive skills. So those glyph pages are like what you would run if you if it's the perfect scenario where you're not getting focused and these are the best output things. Um, that's just the gist of it. Um, so I always change my glyph pages depending on the matches, the comps, the people I'm facing. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, I don't the... want to go too, too far into it yet. <laughs> sure, sure. Nah, we've, and we've got the, those three that we that you shared. Um, one was typically typical use for 3v3s. <laughs> Again, as he was saying, he probably switches it around. Um, mm -hmm. But typical for 3v3, and then like that was Frey Wind Canyon, kind of open worldy, and then uh, a defensive loadout even. Yeah. So um, the 3v3s and the Frey Wind self explanatory because those are like whatever. But the defensive one is. Um, Sometimes when I haven't played Terra in a week or something, I'm I'm very rusty. And Sork, as a Sork, you have to, you always have to play to be your, hand, your hands has to be used to the keys and stuff. And sometimes I get focused really hard that I can't get out of, and I'm very frustrated. Uh, so that glyph page is actually like, for example, the mana barrier, the extra endurance on grounded Nova, and the retail mana barrier, retail cooldown. <laughs> Sometimes I need those just to play on par with other players, and it kind of gives me a competitive edge when I use those. And it's just it's just when I feel like I'm not playing my best, and those kind of help me get back up there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not not uh, not necessarily maximizing your sorcerer, but it is uh, it is giving you maybe a little more leeway to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I play very bad. Not gonna lie, I play very bad, uh, badly during uh, threes or 1v1s, and I would, I would have to use those to uh, try to output or just to survive in most scenarios. And I will write down, play with his defensive glyphs, because that's <laughs> But like, it's, it's, another thing is like, well, I can explain a little bit more later, but when you're playing more defensively, you're losing a lot of your utility and damage output and your mana, stuff like that. So it's a give and take, obviously. Sure, absolutely. And, Sorcerer is all about giving and taking what you can, what you can take from what some glyphs and what you can, but you're basically leaving out on some other glyphs. Okay. Because they're all great glyphs, trust me. Sure. <laughs> uh, so one of the things I actually didn't bring up earlier, but I'm going to bring up now. Um, I, I like bringing this up just to give a decent idea to people who are maybe deciding whether or not they want to play a sorcerer. Um, the sorcerer, would you say that there are classes that are just the bane of the sorcerer existence and then ones you just beat up on? Are there any in those categories? Um, right now, I would, in this meta right now, I think sorcerers are actually, every class gives sorcerer, every DPS class obviously, gives sorcerer a very hard time. There is no, there is no one class that Sorcerers have a very easy time with. Even when it's Archer versus Sork or whatever, every class, the Sorcerer has to do a certain thing to be able to beat that class. And I'm talking about right now, in my level of PvP, there's um, some people might have different gear differences or some people might be more novice on one class than another. But I'm talking about if everyone was at the highest level playing output and the knowledge is all the same at the highest level, then Sorcerers, it, in 1v1 duels or anything, it's very hard for sorcerers to uh, excel. And in order to excel as a sorcerer, you have to read your opponent um, very well and try to anticipate what they're going to do so you can counterattack. And that's the main thing playing as a sorcerer. Um, back then, sorcerers used to beat up on slayers and zerkers very easily, like very, very easily. <laughs> but now it's totally different with their new, the new skills and the new um, buffs and nerfs and stuff like that. I think all classes are equally hard, if not very hard, to kill as a sorcerer. I'll definitely say, though, that a Lancer and a D-Stance Warrior is a pain in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot cast anything when they are on me. Um, there are a couple of D-Stance Warriors. There's not many in PvP, but there are a couple that during threes times. Oh, man. <laughs> it makes me, I just want to cry when I face those D-Stance Warriors. <laughs> but, yeah. But, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like, in general, then, like in one v one situations, Sorks, you definitely got to outplay your opponent. Yes. But uh, but it sounds like in source with sorcerers have a, a pretty fun time in in uh, at least group PvP. Mm-hmm. Because um, all all of our skills excel in um, open open world PvP. It's all does AOE, a lot of utility, um, very few single target skills, uh, if not. None. All, all of it does AOE or lock-ons even do. The only, the only thing I can think of is that's a single single things are like mana siphon, or burning breath, or yeah, that's about it. Those are the only single target skills. But sorcerers are always open world, 
open world PvP. Okay. And it, it's always lock on on multiple people. It's never just one person. So it's kind of difficult for sorcerers to one v one duels or anything. But they surely excel in open world PvP. Or if there's more than a couple people in the group, they excel by a large margin compared to other classes. Awesome. Okay. So I think that handles all the questions that I have set up. Um, it, it, feel free to uh, bring up any additional topics that you want to. If not, we can just go into some Q and A. Okay. Uh, are Are we gonna talk about the glyphs after the Q and A? Uh, if you, yeah, I mean, like I said, if you wanted to continue talking about um, any particular portion of the glyphs, mm -hmm. uh, I did share the glyphs in there, and we talked about okay. the the defensive ones. But did you want to talk about others? Uh. I think s there's some people who think like, oh, why I'm not um, glyphing certain things. Mm, sure. And I just want to talk about how like uh, in certain, uh, as, as I said before, there's certain areas where I really w would glyph more things over certain things. So for example, some people are asking me why I'm glyphing mana volley on uh, extra uh, direct, uh, duration for that. And the reason why is that when I play against Mystics in threes or uh, Zerker in threes, and that extra two, three seconds uh, where I tap their mana, uh, it, it, it affects them a lot because mystics can't really get their mana as fast as priests, such as mana charge or mana infusion, stuff like that. So when I tap them, it gives them a long time before they can regain the same posture they were in two minutes ago. And I usually do this, I try to do this in the beginning of the match so I can at least get two mana volleys out. And I feel like I, um, there are certain glyphs where I prioritize over other glyphs, but um, I, if I were to say one thing about sources, I, it really depends on how well and what kind of uh, sorcerer are you. Are you a very defensive sork or are you a very aggro sork? And what kind of play style? Every glyph, well, almost every glyph in the sork's glyph page is very useful. It really depends how your play style is. And that's, and that's the, uh, the glyphs I gave out. It's just the basic outline or some kind of glyphs that I always want to have in my glyph page. But I always definitely just change it up. And I think that's probably a good takeaway for, uh, it's a takeaway for me, so I, I would assume it's a takeaway for other people who are new to Sorks as well as uh, the, the three that are shared, and I'll, I'll once again share them in the chat, uh, the three that were shared probably a good starting point, but uh, over time you'll probably get used to what you need for specific situations. Mm -hmm. And it all comes back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier, and that's you got to play, you got to get used yeah. to it, you got to get that muscle memory down. Yeah, it took me a that rotation, the quote unquote one shot rotation, took me almost, I would say one, like at least at least 10, to one, 10 months to one year to fully get used to it to the point that I can always use that combo anywhere, whether it's Freywind 3s, Open World PvP, Corsairs, whatever. It took me a very long time to get used to it because I was so used to my other thing, other rotations, stuff like that. But uh, there's, there are other rotations out there that, that are, might be better, might be worse. Um, it's all up to you how you want to play the class and how you prioritize your skills more. And Sorks are lenient about that, is that you can play however you want and it just depends on how well and how well you know your skills and how uh, much you prioritize the skill over other skills. Awesome. All right. So let's see here. Uh, and of course, like I said, feel free to, if there's other things you wanted to touch on, now's a really good time to do it. If there is more, more to talk about with glyphs or, or anything, um, now's a good time. We're, it's about 4 o'clock, so we're getting down to, uh, I'd say we've got about 15 minutes left. All right. So unless you, did you want to start taking questions from chat or was there something else you wanted to? No, I can take questions from chat now. Okay, so to the chatters out there, if you have questions for Giraffe or if you want him to clarify on something that was talked about a little bit earlier, please feel free to ask questions now. And I'm gonna make sure that I have my pages set up to do giveaways that we'll do in a little minute. And then of course, exclamation point commands. This is only for me. Exclamation point commands is only for me. <laughs> no one else can do it. <laughs> Let's see, how about Mana Barrier on Retail? Why doesn't he use it? Uh, I do use it on my Defensive Glyph. Um, I just don't use it all the time because it gives... It's a lot of Glyph points. I think it's... Yeah, five Glyph points. Uh, I, play, I use it in my Defensive 
I, I sometimes, if I feel like I'm getting knocked down by a lot, like a Zerker or a Slayer on the other team, which is most cases on the other team, <laughs> if I'm always getting focused by those Zerkers or um, Slayers, then I do run it. I always, I especially with the changes of the Lightning Trap, where they don't need that, like they took out the Glyph for the increased damage for Lightning Trap. So I sometimes do use the extra points on Retail Shield. Uh, but most of the times, if I'm playing, it's, and that's mostly in threes. Um, in Freywin or GBGs, I don't get focused or knocked down as much, so I, I, don't, I don't really need it. Fair mostly enough. in threes, though. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> Interesting question. I'd actually like to ask a lot of people this. How do you feel about the phrase plus 12 or plus 15? There's no in between. <laughs> <laughs> I was streaming this actually, um, I think a week ago, two weeks ago, or uh, my disc was at plus 13, and I had enough uh, enough money to try and attempt to plus 15, and I got peer pressured on stream. Like the moment I tried to plus 15, I went from like 60 viewers to like 120 viewers. I think I watched this. <laughs> you watched this? It was at I night. Did. It was at like 2 a.m. And I remember because I had work the next day, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to try. I got to plus 14 like multiple times. And I'm like, it's going to work. It's going to work. And all of a sudden it doesn't. I'm just like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> biggest tease ever. I always like watching those kind of streams. Uh, streams, <laughs> streams where somebody's going for something big. Like I, I remember watching um, like Sumoria going for plus 15 when it first came <laughs> out. And I remember watching um, a couple other people doing that as well. I, I can't remember who it was, but I was watching somebody open. They had like 20,000 lock or strong boxes that they were opening. Oh. I just like watching those streams. They're fun to watch. See the RNG. I like the, yeah, I like watching the RNG streams. Because yeah. it's weird to me, and I talk to Manea about this all the time, because Manea has the worst RNG out of anybody at the company, I think. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that I have the best RNG out of everybody at the company. So people are like... Oh man, we gotta look into the, these percentages on why why I'm not getting uh, what I want out of this uh, out of this box, or why why didn't this item drop for me from Vault? And I'm like, well, I don't know what's wrong. I got I got <laughs> multiples you, of that earring. I don't know. What did you set about. up something in the code Tonka? Did you <laughs> meddle with it? Maybe. I don't think uh, they're gonna be too happy about that. No. <laughs> I've I've the, yeah. I'm getting fired as soon as I walk out. HR is preparing <laughs> preparing my resignation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but right. my RNG is very bad. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, somebody somebody says, can you try a real duel with the Mystic? Oh man, that's I. I <laughs> but realistically, the the Mystic would like outplay me really hard because of their CC uh, CC abilities, and uh, it's uh, to get that one shot rotation on a Mystic is. Like hitting my head on a door, it's it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and it would probably take a while too. Yeah. I would think that this would be a long fight. Yeah. Maybe, maybe while I'm doing giveaways, you guys can duel, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the stream can end. No, it's gonna it's gonna show very bad bad at me. The mystics are just gonna walk around me in circles while I'm slept. It's not gonna be a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, why don't you over or why don't you have over channel CDR? Over channel CDR because. Uh, there's so many, at times, over channel can be very good. In PvE, I always use it. In PvP, there's certain, inst uh, certain times where I can't react or I don't have enough time to use my over channel um, that many times. And over channel is only on a 10 second cooldown, it's not that long. And for example, uh, I use um, Hailstorm, and over channel and Hailstorm are pretty useless. The only real reason I would use over channel is if I know I'm going to use a it's going to be for sure I'm going to hit them first, and um, I'm, my Hailstorm or something is not going to take part of it. So if I, for example, someone's 10 HP, and I'm over here, and, and I over channel, I uh, pop it, and I go up to the front, and then pop my Void Pulse, and then does extra damage. I know that for right there, they're going to die. That's the only time where I'll really use the over channel if it's a for sure guaranteed shot. And it's not bad getting the extra 10%, but it's not worth for me personally to uh, glyph it. But that doesn't mean you, you, uh, you as a sorcerer or any other sorcerers in this game can use that. It depends how you play, right? Mm. Cool. Fair enough. 
Let's see. I, I love teleport jaunting into Void Pulse and they just pop. <laughs> <laughs> the best feeling. Well, it's kind of swag too, right? Like you're right <laughs> up next to him. It's like a drive-by. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Um, Glyphing Hailstorm mana reduction for three saves less mana than Glyphing Void Pulse. Why waste five points on it? Because um, Hailstorm, um, sometimes I'm not able to use it as often as I want because if I want to AOE, if I want to, sorry, sleep someone, um, for example, if I slept the priest on the side and the two DPS are very low, there's most likely times where they're going to run to their priest so that if I hit the if I hit the person who's low that ran to the priest, they're going to I'm going to awake the priest so that they can heal them. So there's some times where hailstorm isn't the best action, but hailstorm, I'm sorry, but void pulse, I can like if they're behind their priest, I can just go behind them, void pulse. And that's it's it's, single, it's like a single target, right? So it's e but hailstorm would wake them up. Oh, uh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, so it's certain situations where Hailstorm would be better, but most of the times it's not great in uh, threes. There's other utility spells that I'd rather glyph for. Okay. And that's probably something that people can get comfortable with. If that's what they prefer to do, they can switch exactly. it up. Exactly. Sure. I remember back when I was very undergeared compared to other people, um, I would, I would uh, put a Hailstorm down and actually sit in the Hailstorm so that they would be deterred from aiming at me. Because I was so undergeared, I'm like, if you gotta hit me, you're gonna get you're gonna get hit too. <laughs> <laughs> you come into my realm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> let's see here. Why eight power ring? I don't know what that's talking about. Sorry, the power. Why eight, why eight, eight power ring? Oh, on the fire beat, I guess. Why why are you using the fire beat ring? I don't know. I'm confused. Uh, because it gives me extra power. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I uh, maybe um, what's the Shaprazor? Maybe um, uh, clarify on that a little bit. What do you mean by Y eight power ring? Let's see. Should show a BG. I want to see a Sork in action. That's probably something that you could check out Giraffe's stream. <laughs> Plug in. <laughs> Boom! Guest Twitch right there. Make sure to give him a follow. And uh, that's where you can find some Sork action. Yeah, I, I don't stream on a regular basis because I do work full time, so it's hard. And sometimes when I come home, I just want to relax. But sometimes when I do, I am up for it, I will stream. Most of the times I will be streaming Frey Wind or Threes or some PV. But there is no timeline of our schedule <laughs> oh, okay i got it. yeah i mean that, that, i think it's a lot of people <laughs> yeah. i don't think i don't think people really get to go to work and uh, spend the last three hours of their day streaming like some people <laughs> last wish, three hours of my work week <laughs> <laughs> i wish that was mine too <laughs> uh oh okay so the question was why fire beat over fire uh fire trill uh, I guess Fire Trail has eight or has ten power on it. Fire Trail. I, I have the Fire Trail earring. Is that and, what you mean? I don't know. Because the Fire Trails. I don't know. I'm confused. Oh, I think it's also because I can't. My RNG is not that good. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't get it. I think I, I, there we go. That popped in my mind. Uh, because my RNG is very bad, as everyone knows, and I can't get the good ear, uh, good rings and stuff. Oh, uh, okay. It never drops. <laughs> so it goes back to the bad RNG. You've got Minea RNG. <laughs> I don't think you should start. I don't think you should just continue with that Tonka. He's just gonna get very bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll look for some more questions in there. We got just a few minutes left. So any other questions that people have for Giraffe before I let him? Go back into his land of very high trees. <laughs> into my sky castle. <laughs> yeah, into the sky castle. You've evolved over time to have a longer neck so that you can get to your sky castle. Exactly. And do it. <laughs> Let's see. He's using a worse version of the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> yeah, thanks for telling me that I have really bad RNG. <laughs> I can't get it. I'm, I'm serious. I can't get it for some reason. Just rubbing it in. Oh, I, it dropped once, but someone sniped it from me. I remember. <laughs> I was really salty about that. <laughs> PM zoning for recruitment. Yep. It's on, it's on the... Uh, in, every time I inspect him, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Did you do that on purpose? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Always PMs lane for recruitment about recruitment recruiting in, uh, if you want to join good fight. PMs lane. That's Z. I mean X I L L I N. <laughs> Try to get too fancy on us. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what do you think of <laughs> What do you think of the upcoming Sork buffs from K Terra? Do you think it will open up a lot of glyph glyph paths for sorks do you know about those yes i do okay. and i am dying to get those because i think sorks will become flavor of the month when that comes out um because those those reduce glyphs like uh points and we have that means we will have utility out of the yin yang like there will be so many different things you can glyph for and you can uh, i i definitely think uh sorks will definitely be a little bit more powerful than before, that will have an easier time soloing people or doing more utility stuff. So you don't have to, you don't have to, there's no, there's no, um, you don't have to give certain, give away certain glyphs to have certain glyphs. You'll have everything. <laughs> it'll, it'll be very good for me. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Sounds like it'll be good for, maybe we'll have to bring you on for a short 30 minute spot just to talk about what's changed. <laughs> I don't want to give away too many secrets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll have you on uh, two or three months after the chain happens. <laughs> then exactly. you can talk about it, the old news. Exactly. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I'll answer just a couple more questions. Um, oh, yes, I am Canadian for those who are wondering. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is we actually have, I, th I think I can officially say that we have more Canadians on our stream than we do of any other area. Mm-hmm. That when that do the teach me how tos, I feel like everybody I talk to ends up being Canadian. I'd be very surprised. Our, uh, there's, um, I could confidently say I'm not going to say names, but there are a lot of Canadians who play, and a lot of us live within the same area. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and we we like we we met up, but like there are a lot of Canadians. <laughs> it's a Canadian party. Exactly. <laughs> Get our maple syrup and poutine. You ride it. Everybody rides in on a moose. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um uh, one more question I think. Let me see if I can grab one from chat. Um what what is this? Uh so the question is kind of about uh defensive ability. Is there anything you can do to reduce the fact that Sork is very low on defense? And I think that gl the glyph setup you have is one way to do it, but is there is there other things that you can mention? Uh that's the one of the reasons why I have grounded etchings on my chest and because some people prefer crit um, crit etchings for their chest and boots but I'm going for I have a etchings endurance etchings for my chest I'm going for crit uh, decreased crit chance on my boots it's because we are so squishy that we need that extra little defense and there's certain times where um, I recently just found out that about the uh, the Nova glyph where it increases endurance every tw uh, for 20 uh, 20 percent by for 15 seconds that's actually off cooldown, and it get increases. It actually makes a lot of difference. Um, but your play style will define how well you play. And for example, as I was saying before, uh, there's risk and reward factor for source. If you become very aggro, yes, you might get hit. You might get picked off very easily. But you might blow up the other team very easily. Or you can play very defensively, like always staying in your traps and stuff like that, but end up getting hit too often. It really depends on your play style, and you have to play around your guild page how you kind of play. Awesome. I like that. I like that answer. And I think, and that goes along with, with some other classes, but maybe it goes for sorts a little more than some, and that's uh, what you were saying about uh, the risk-reward. If you, if you push it all in, if you push all your chips in, you could be a winner. Or you could, just get, <laughs> you could get skunked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that is all the time we've got. It's, uh, it's already getting close to ZMR time, and i got to do some giveaways. So before I let you go, anything you want to mention? Any uh, any pimping out you want to do? You got a blog or an Etsy <laughs> that you knit things on? Any anything like that? Um, well, the only thing 
you guys uh, can reach me at is my, uh, my Twitch TV, which is twitchtv.giraffex, which is on the EME stream, I think when you type the guest, guest or something. Yep. Yeah, I guess Twitch. Um, I don't have a blog or anything. Um, as I said before, if you do want to find out how to get to Good Fight, just PM Zillion. Other than that, I'd just like to say a big thanks for my guild, Good Fight, with uh, being so supportive of me and uh, for everything they have done for me. And I hope we can continue in the future. And, hopefully and thanks we'll see you so much, Tonka, for having me here. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll see you in the, uh, in the next tournament. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, I'll make sure that all these, all that we talked about, will be highlighted most likely on Monday and then probably uploaded onto YouTube sometime next week. So if you got a friend who should listen to Giraffe, share, you can share this all to them and uh, we'll provide the links next week. So thanks, sure. you, thank you very much. I'm going to let you go and uh, get right. back to grazing through the... <laughs>